The Innovators Network. Welcome to the Killer Innovation Show, the longest continuously produced podcast in history. Each week, Phil McKinney brings you the insights and strategies to amplify your creativity and innovation skills. Here's your host, Phil McKinney. Welcome. How are you doing this week? Hopefully, you found some time in the last week to spend just thinking. I don't know about you, but it's probably one of my biggest struggles is just finding that quiet time. And as innovators, it is important that we find that quiet time. So I would encourage you, whatever you're working on, whatever is crowding out your uh, your attention, things are being distracting, whatever it might be, carve out, even if it's just 10 minutes every day, to just relax and to just think. That's my encouragement for all of you innovators out there working on creating that next great killer breakthrough innovation that's going to transform people's lives. Now, let me give you a little context and background on today's topic. And that is, we, can't, we always tend to focus when we say innovation about that new product or that new service, that new thing. We get so excited about that widget. But innovation is so much more than a new product. It is so much more. It is, uh, you can innovate far beyond just a product or service. And that is what we're going to talk about today. Because if you just focus on the product and service and you don't think about all the other areas to innovate, the likelihood of that product and service being a success goes down dramatically. So you want to listen to today's show to get some insights on all those other areas that you should be thinking about innovating in addition to innovating that new product or service. But before we jump into today's show, I have a big favor to ask. Can you like, follow, and share? If this is an episode that you think somebody else should listen to, somebody on your team, somebody in an entirely new or different organization, somebody that you're connected to on social media, if you think that this is a show that they should listen to, share it. Put a link up there, share it onto uh, your social media channel, like it, post a review, post a comment wherever you get your podcast. We would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And for those of you who have been uh, posting comments, we saw I've been reading some of the the new ones over on the uh, Apple uh, podcast app. So again, thank you for that. We really uh, do appreciate that. And with this, let me get out of the way and let's jump into this week's episode. This episode is sponsored by Zoom. With Zoom, you can streamline your communication, collaboration, and creativity all in one place. Zoom is the market-leading platform that provides video meetings, voice, webinars, and chat across desktops, phones, tablets, and conference room systems. To learn more about Zoom and sign up for your free account, visit KillerInnovations.com slash Zoom. Innovation just isn't about products. We tend to get all wrapped up on wanting to create that new thing, that new product, that new service, the new whatever, the shiny object. And we get so focused on that that, you know, it almost becomes that's the culture of an organization. When you use the word innovation, it's about what's that new thing? How do we innovate? And everybody jumps immediately to we got to create a new product. We got to create a new service. We got to create um, whatever, a new widget, um, uh, whatever. But we have to be careful because we tend to focus on uh, those new products. Now, don't get me wrong, those are important. Those are critically important for organizations. But you have to look about, around, about the other things that are around it, the things that could have influence, that could actually be the key piece to make that new product or service a success. So what are some of these other areas? What are other areas that in many cases we just don't get, you know, uh, uh, we don't think about? Well, one is, is, you know, business model innovation. Now we've talked about that um, here on the show, you know, before we haven't talked about it in a while, maybe uh, that'll become a topic in an upcoming 
uh, episode, but business models uh, be can become important. Process innovation. How do you improve the production and distribution of what it is you're creating? Um, marketing innovation. How do you innovate marketing to find a new and innovative way to bring whatever this new product or service is in? Now, there's a whole wide range of other innovations. There's support, you know, how do you innovate customer care and, you know, uh, help desk support in order to make sure the customer gets a really great experience. And there's even sales innovation. How do you innovate the sales organization and the sales processes? And how do you, how do salespeople engage with customers to make that experience um, really exciting and a differentiator for you? So these are just some of the other areas that are around the new product or the new service. So the key here is, is that innovation isn't just about the new thing, that new product, that new uh, service. Now, we talk a lot here on this show about the FIRE Innovation Framework. The framework lays kind of the foundation, the bones to your innovation process. And then around it, you build your processes. So the fire process, fire framework is around focus, where you're going to drive and, and really, really you're going to focus your innovation efforts. The uh, uh, I in fire stands for ideation. How do you generate ideas? Do you believe in brainstorming or, or electronic suggestion box or focus groups or however you want to do it? R is ranking. How do you prioritize? What are the best ideas and how do you find those best ideas? out of this big pile of things that come out of ideation. And then the E is execution. So focus, ideation, ranking, execution. Now, in the FIRE framework, one of the key discussion topics is, is around those pieces. How do you think about innovation in a full 360 view? And in FIRE, we think about it around three dimensions. The who, the customer, who gets the benefit of this thing you're creating, the what, the shiny object, that new product, that new service, that whatever, and then the how, everything else around it, everything that's needed around it in order to enable and create this product and make it a success in the marketplace. The who, know who your customer is, understand the problem, because that's what you're innovating, who they're, and they're the ones that are going to exchange some form of value. They're going to pay you money. They're going to give you attention, whatever the, quote, currency that they are going to give you. Who is that? What, what are they going to give you for the value of the what? The product, the service, the widget, whatever it is. And then how do you make that all happen? Everything behind the scenes. And you have to do all three. You have to think about all three if you are going to have innovation success. So, the, you know, in the case of the what, that's what everybody focuses on. And, and maybe some people think about the who. You know, do you look at the customer differently? Do you have a new, unique way to, to identify the customer and the customer segment? Um, how do you reach them from the standpoint of the market? And, um, the, the demographics, and then the how. You know, look, the how is not flashy. Um, it's not typically visible. You don't see it. It's behind the scenes, you know, manufacturing and shipping and warehousing, all critical. Look, I can tell you all kinds of stories when I was at HP um, about how critically important the supply chain is and how you have to constantly be thinking about how do you innovate that supply chain. If you think about fast forward to what we have today, and look, we are in a severe semiconductor shortage. When you have auto manufacturers idling plants and putting, uh, and, and putting their, their factory workers out on uh, furloughs and that, or, or uh, pausing the production, because they can't get semiconductors in order to put it into a new car. That's a supply chain issue. And those are things that are not flashy. You don't see it, but boy, is it critical. You can innovate the most gorgeous new vehicle. One little silicon part that is, that is required in that car will jam you up. And I can give you all kinds of horror stories in my years as the CTO at, at Hewlett Packard. 
about running into these supply chain issues. And at HP, you know, we hired a guy by the name of Tony Profit. I would probably put Tony in as probably one of the top supply chain executives in the world. He just knows how to work that and work it well, and not work it out just to be abusive to your suppliers, but bringing that partnership together, bringing that ecosystem together, because you're dependent on that on those things. Tony's now the uh, chief diversity officer um, at Salesforce, um, and uh, you know I count Tony as a friend. And uh, but being able to watch a real expert, knowing the how, everything from production and manufacturing and processes and partnerships and ecosystem, you know, there's nobody in the world better than Tony. But look. These how things, these things about how you do things, they're not flashy, they're not visible, and they're never usually targeted for innovation. There's not, it's not the top thing you think of. Well, I mean, you think of the word innovation, oh, I'm going to go clean up this process, you know, on uh, uh, air freighting uh, products from Shenzhen to Indianapolis, which was an issue at, at HP. You know, but someone has to go in there and you got to innovate it. Just to give you some insight, that innovation at, uh, at HP resulted in an entirely new airport being built. And that's all, that's a whole nother story. So maybe um, in a future show. And if you're interested in hearing that story, let me know and maybe I'll weave it in and maybe uh, we'll just do a whole uh, story on in a, uh, truly you know, outrageous out of the box innovation around things like supply chain, manufacturing, those kinds of things. So again, what are these areas that we really need to think about from the standpoint of innovation? We're gonna focus not on all of them, we're just gonna focus on, uh, on three. We're gonna talk about business model innovation, process innovation, and marketing innovation. We're only gonna focus on the three. We could you know, do sales innovation and support innovation and all these others. And that would be, you know, you could be here for hours <laughs> listening to me. But we're just going to focus on these three. Business model, process, and marketing. Okay. So let's talk about business model innovation. Many of us know what business model innovation is, right? It's the entire business model. How are you going to deliver this thing, whatever it is, a product, a service, an experience, or whatever, and structure it in such a way that the customer's value gets created in a way that you receive the value back in, in a differentiated way that more correlates to the, I don't know, what the customer perceives of what they're getting. So let me simplify this. Let me walk through a couple of these business models, right? So again, you're trying to create a mechanism of which there's this exchange. The exchange of the product or service or experience, whatever it is you are creating. And then the exchanges is what does the customer give you? And how and what is that model? How does that exchange happen? So business model innovations that we've all seen is, you know, subscription model. So I have a bunch of tools um, here. So take uh, my uh, Amazon creative tools for, for, for Photoshop and all of the, you know, all uh, you know, all of the Adobe tools, right? So that's I have it on a subscription model. I pay so much per month, and I get a list of, I don't know, I think I get eight or nine of the Adobe uh, apps as part of my Adobe Cloud subscription model. And as long as I'm paying, I get the use of the apps, and it's a monthly fee. Used to be you'd buy a license, you'd buy the license, and then every year or every other year they would come out with a big release and. You'd have to write a really big check and, you know, and all of those issues. And they just broke it down. You just pay per month the same amount. And as new releases come out, you get those new releases for free. You constantly get updated and you just pay it on and on and on pretty much forever, right, going forward. Subscription model. If you're new thing, that's one of the business model innovations. Bundling. Do you bundle yours in? Do you get yours uh, whatever you and your new thing would be better or the customer would see more value from it if it was bundled, right? So um, I have a lot of uh, uh, digital music uh, instruments here in my studio. Um, I'd have a number of MIDI controllers. 
it uses a lot of plugins. Third party plugin uh, creators will say, hmm, if my plugin is best used with, oh, let's call it Ableton Live. So, Ableton Live is a tool that allows you to create sounds and music, et cetera, and you can record in that application. So what they'll do is they'll cut a deal with Ableton and they'll bundle it. So you buy the new Ableton 11, which just came out, just downloaded it a couple weeks ago, and there's a bunch of plugins bundled in with it. That's bundling. Freemium, very common. Give something away for free. People get it by timeline or by a certain set of features. If they want more, then they got to start paying. number of mobile apps do this. They'll give you the app for free. But when you want to turn on certain capabilities in order to get more uh, capability built out of the app, you got to pay for it. And that's where you get from a freemium to paying a premium in order to, to do that. Razor blade. I'll give you the razor for free, but every razor blade you use, I'm going to charge you for it. You know, and look, I'm CTO at Hewlett Packard. <laughs> the razor and razor blade model was the model for printers. Printers, the hardware of printers were sold at cost or a loss to, in order to get people to buy the ink. And the margin was all in the ink. So, perfect example of the razor and razor blade. You know, the other is leasing model, right? Take auto, you know, automobiles. Leasing is quite popular. If you're, you know, driving it around town, and you don't want to, you know, you and you and you swapping up and you're upgrading your vehicles fairly often. Um, you want to have a reduced down upfront down payment, and there's good terms. Lease the vehicle, perfectly uh, valid. At the end of the time, you turn it back in and go pick yourself a new vehicle, and you just pay the the monthly uh, the lease rate. And then crowdsourcing. Um, you know, there's uh, Pebble Watch was a perfect example of this. Pebble Watch, great uh, company. Uh, gentleman who worked with me at HP was the head of design at Pebble Watch. Guy by the name of Mark Solomon, phenomenal designer. Um, and Pebble had a unique model. They would design a new watch, and then they would crowdsource it. So pre-order your watch. Here's the new Pebble Watch that's coming out. Sign up, crowdsource it, and when it got to a certain level, then that's when manufacturing kicked off to build the watch. So you always had to build this excitement over and over and over again, and they were really, really good at it. Um, and then Pebble Watch, um, I'm trying to remember who they got acquired by. Somebody out listening will figure, will, will, will send me a note and remind me. I'm trying to, um, I'll think of it here in a second. But that was a very unique model when it was being done. So you didn't have... You didn't have to go out to manufacturing and build it and hope people wanted it. You designed something, you put out the design, and if, pe if enough people got excited about it, then you manufactured it. Um, so again, crowdsourcing. There are lots of different business models that are out there. You can go off and think about what would be um, some really good uh, business models and innovate. Think about it differently, particularly if you're going to disrupt something that's already in place. So take the taxi industry, right? So the taxi industry is you're standing on the curb, you're waving your hand, you get a taxi cab to come over, you get done, you're watching the meter go click, 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 click. And then um, at the end, you got this three to five minutes in the back of the cab, you're pulling out your credit card, you're handing it to them, they're swiping it, you got to sign the receipt or you're Swiping it into the card reader and the seat back, blah, 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 and now you're done. Now think of, you know, Uber or Lyft, right? It's the same fundamental service, but they change the business model. They change the entire way you um, get a cab to come pick you up. You're not standing on the curb hoping one that comes by. You're using your app and you're saying, hey, I need, a, I need one. Oh, this guy, this driver is... Five minutes away, they'll be there in five minutes. Boom, you hop in. And the transaction's all taken care of. You are not dealing with, you know, pulling out cash out of your pocket and all those kinds of things. So if you're disrupting an industry like the taxi cab industry, then think about their business model and innovate the business model, right? There's another, the app is pretty cool, that type of thing. But when you really think about Uber and Lyft, 
the entire innovation is a business model innovation. That is what they did. But you can apply it to entirely new products and new services. If you're building a new widget, a watch like Pebble or a, um, a new piece of software, you know, do you do it as a subscription model or you pay once and you never pay again and you automatically get every upgrade forever? That's another interesting model. But think about the business model. Differentiate yourself not only in the product or service, differentiate yourself in the business model itself. Let's talk about another uh, how. How do things happen behind the scenes? How are you going to bring this product, this new what, to your to the new customers? Another one is, is process innovation. Processes. What do I mean by processes? Processes, when I say process innovation, I'm talking about the processes in the within the organization about delivering, right? So how do you deliver this product or service? How does this thing going to get to the customer? How does it get from manufacturing to, to the customer? There's the sequencing. So the processes of saying this step one, this is step two, this is step three, this step has a dependency on this piece being available at the right time. So it's all that, that sequencing. And then there's information and communication, right? So it's all the making sure everything is coordinated, right? So that's task managers, it's information. We typically think of that about it as there's a lot of technology in that piece, right? So it's the information, tracking it, the scheduling, to making sure everything's being done in the right sequence. So think about what it is you're doing, the new product or service, the widget, the magic that you are creating Think about it from the context of what can I innovate in the form of the delivery, the delivery of either raw goods to manufacturing, manufacturing to, to uh, a warehouse or distribution point or to a reseller or to whatever, ultimately to the end customer. Do you build on demand when the customer orders it? You build that one widget, drop it in the box, it goes, you know, whatever you want to, whatever is right for you. How do you think about innovating the delivery? How do you deliver the sequences? If it's normally your competitors have a 30-step process to build and deliver a, a product or widget, can you do it in three? And can you do it, therefore, two times faster? Um, and you have less inventory and lower cost and faster delivery to the customer. What is in the sequence that you can innovate? And then information and, and communication. Is, a, is there a way to um, have you know, automate and be able to see what's happening and to maybe even expose to the customer? If you remember the, uh, the, the mini cars, right, when they first came out, um, I'm not even sure if they still do this or not, but I remember when they first came out, one of the things they did is, is when you ordered it, you got to pick, like, paint color and you can have the you know the union jack painted on the roof of your car and all those kinds of things but once that order was done you would get emails you could actually see okay your car is starting at this phase it's now in this phase of manufacturing and it's in this third phase and at some point they actually take a picture of it on the assembly line and you could actually see that's communications to the customer and you create an entirely different experience for the customer and the customer is now involved. Yes, the car is the product. The car is the widget. The car is the thing that the customer is getting. But the how you build the car, how you deliver the car can be just as important. And that process that they used with the minis was great because it really created an emotional bond. They'd stick a letter in the glove box signed by the people who built your car and when it arrived, you rushed out, you opened the, your glove box, and boom, there it was. There was the letter that was signed by the people who built your car. And you had that emotional attachment. Great innovation around information and communication. Not just communication internally, but communication to your customer. Maybe communication to your ecosystem of partners that you're working with to deliver this great product or this great experience. So again, process innovation. Delivery, sequence, information, and communication. Three pieces. Think about those. What can you do to do process innovation that's going to transform 
what, how you're delivering that new product or service. Now let's talk about the third area of innovation around the how. What is it you do behind the scenes to deliver this great product or great service? We're talking about marketing innovation. Now, marketing tends to get, you know, treated as kind of a little bit of a soft thing, right? But marketing, particularly in today's world where, you know, the noise level gets so high, how do you break through the noise level? How do you break through so people go, okay, this one broke through. Boy, that's exciting. And I want it. I want to buy that. So what are some of the areas within marketing that are prime examples for innovation? Well, one is is packaging, something as simple as packaging. Now, I was never a big believer that packaging was absolutely the critical thing until I got to HP. And you, we got a lot of feedback. HP spent a lot of time on designing packaging. One is, is you know, it's consumer electronics. You stick it in a box, and boy, you just hope that it, when it gets to the other end and the customer opens it up, it works. So there was a lot of testing, packaging, putting things onto pallets, dropping pallets from 12 feet onto concrete um, with everything banded together like a pallet size of printers and a pallet of uh, laptops to make sure that it arrived at the other end um, successfully. So we actually got creative in, in one case. I'm going to give you a little side story here. And this is um, to get creative about new kinds of packaging. We actually sponsored a uh, program at the uh, Pasadena School of Design where we challenged a cross-functional team of students. So these were students who um, had software and technology as their focus area. We had uh, graphic designers. We had, um, um, uh, I don't even want to call them storytellers. Um, you know, people who do like movies and write scripts and those kinds of things. Um, and we gave them this challenge. We shipped them like one of every product HP made, including TVs. We made TVs back then. Uh, but monitors and desktops and laptops and mobile phones and printers. and So they could see all the different kinds of packaging. And as part of the sponsoring at Pasadena, when you sponsor a program like this, you get first look at it, meaning we got to go in and see the final project at the end of the semester. And they had a big day, invite people in, they could see the work. We, HP, we got to see it. And anything we were interested in applying, meaning we were going to take it and actually use it, we could carve it out, meaning the public didn't see it. We would work a deal with the student and actually license the idea from the student. So, you know, you kind of think in the traditional um, student project type of work, we go in there and, you know, I flew in with, seven or eight executives from HP, and we went in, and there were some really good ones, but we got to this one where it was a team of five on this packaging design where you lifted the column of the box and it, the, the particular device, it was a, a, uh, uh, a gaming PC called Blackbird sitting up on almost like this pedestal. And when you took, when you slid this big, tall cardboard column off the top of it, it was like it was being revealed. It was sitting on, it was gorgeous and designed in such a way that it was great protection. And we just, everybody on the HP team just totally just went nuts. We carved that out. We ended up cutting a deal with the student. We actually used that packaging. But in some cases, to innovate these kinds of things, sometimes you got to get out of your own way. That's an example of getting out of your own way. And it was un unbelievable, just absolutely unbelievable. Um, so again, we talk about packaging. This is marketing innovation. The other one is product placement. How do you get your product placed so it gets noticed? Right? Do you post it on? You know, do you do a sponsorship on a podcast so the somebody with a podcast talks about your product? Or you know, uh, one of the things we did at HP, Sajeev Chahil, who's the chief marketing officer, had some very close ties in LA and uh, product placements on TV shows and product placements in movies, those kinds of things were, are, are 
and still continue to be a very big deal. Um, and you get those, and you get those right placements. And we also did deals, you know, with the NBA. So if you watch, if you're watching uh, uh, an NBA game, and you look at courtside where they do the statistics, look closely at the monitors. They have big HP logos on the on the back of the monitors. That's a, that's the equivalent of a placement. So that's get creative. You know, it's like. You know, NBA players walking around with Beats headphones. Jimmy Iovine did a great job of getting every NBA player uh, pairs of uh, Beats headphones back in when Beats first came out. Uh, product promotion. How do you promote it? How do you advertise it? Um, et cetera. So think about product promotion. And then pricing. Marketing can you play a very critical role in how do you price this. What's that? What's the pricing model going to look like for uh, this? And you can price it in a unique way. Lower, start off with a really cheap price, and then raise it. Do you um, uh, price based on feature set? You know, what, however you want to price it. Pricing can be uh, an area of innovation. I think many cases people overlook. People just look at competition and see how competition prices it and you price it just below, or you price it at a premium, get creative. Don't, don't price like your competition. Think differently about the pricing. So let's wrap this up, uh, you know, and I wanna you know, bring this all together and, and tie it up in a bow for you. Look, innovation is much more than a new product or a new service. Yes, you, you, you get excited about that new product, new services, but don't overlook the who, how are you going to reach that customer, and everything that happens in the how, the processes, the, the marketing innovation. You know, Think about all, everything that happens that, to support that product or service. How do you innovate that? How do you drive an innovation that matches to that product that actually will help that product become successful? I mean, you know, we can all get excited about the new, but it takes more than just the product or service to be successful. And taking a new thing, a new product or service, and then forcing it into your old processes or your, your current approach to marketing or your current way of selling it or your current pricing strategy, you're taking this great, exciting new thing and you're jamming it into an old model. Do something different. Innovate everything. Innovate everything around that product or service because your likelihood of success will go up orders of magnitude if you're willing to do that. Do not constrain what needs innovating. Look at the ecosystem that you have, everything that touches that product or service, everything from sales and marketing, customer service, customer support, promotion, advertising, everything. And figure out where you can innovate in the how, in order to really support this new product and services. I've seen so many times where people focus on the product, jam it into the existing system, and then the product fails. And I've talked about that, that experience here on this show with regards to my experience at HP, most recently in a recent show, um, is a perfect example. So I'm speaking from experience. Do not constrain what needs innovating. Look at the ecosystem that you have and be willing to change them. Be willing to innovate in all dimensions to make that next just breakthrough, game-changing innovation that you're working on a huge success. So I want to just quickly summarize again. The important point I'm trying to make today is that thinking about just the product and service creates blind spots. It creates a blind spot of all the other elements that you really need to take a hard look at that may need innovating in order to ensure that that new product or service is going to be a huge success. So don't have those blind spots. Keep that in mind as you're working on that innovation, that new thing that you're creating, that you've also got to look at all of these other areas. You've got to take a 360-degree view of your innovation efforts if you hope to be successful. So as we wrap up today's show, I want to remind you, please help me pay it forward. 
We started this show back in 2005 as a way to satisfy a commitment that I made to Bob Davis, my first mentor, my first job. And I actually went to four companies with Bob um, as part of his staff. And he invested a huge amount of time. And a lot of my success that I've had in my career is the result of that early mentorship from Bob. When I asked him how to pay it back, he laughed. He says, you can't. You got to pay it forward. This is my way of paying it forward. It is sharing my lessons learned, my experiences, what I did right, what I did wrong, having guests on the show who can share their own experiences and their own challenges in innovating in the hopes that we can help you, one, learn from that so you can avoid some of the, the pain we went through and that you can be successful. And the, the ideas and innovations that you're working on that are going to change the world, I am looking so forward to those because it takes all of us. It takes all of us as creatives, all of us as innovators to come up with that new product, that new service that's exciting, solving the big problems we have, solve those wicked problems that we have. It's going to come from you. And I look so forward to seeing what it is you're working on. Uh, giving you a heads up, we're getting ready to head on the road again. The bus is uh, getting ready to go. We will be heading out here. Um, we will be on the road for about five, six weeks. We're heading down uh, to the um, southeast again. But in this case, we're going to come back up uh, through the north and then back um, in early summer back towards Colorado. And then in the fall, um, we will actually be going towards the east coast. We will be spending a little bit of time in the Northeast, coming down. I'll be doing some events in the Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia area, and then heading to Atlanta. The, the bus and myself, we will be on the show floor at Tech Expo in October. So if you are in the Southeast and you want to maybe come see the bus, come see me, we will be at the Tech Expo convention. You can just look it up online. Um, for, I think, four days of, of that week, which is, I think, the second week of October. Um, so if you want to come, uh, take a look at the bus, see it, let me know. I'll even maybe even get you a, a little pass to try to get you in the door um, if you want to come see the bus or meet with me. I will be recording shows from the show floor. So we will be uh, interviewing some pretty exciting innovators and talking about new innovations that will be announced uh, there in October in Atlanta. So. Uh, so think about that. Um, again, I, what I would ask, uh, what would be also really helpful for me, is post a review. Wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Google, Spotify, iHeart, um, you name it. We've been around 16 years. Now we're in season 17. Um, we're on every one. Wherever you're finding your uh, podcast, that's where we're at. We would greatly appreciate you posting a review there. It helps people then find the show, and I would greatly appreciate it. So with that, I'm going to get out of here. I want to thank you for your time. Your time is hugely valuable. Hopefully, we are delivering value um, for the time you give us, and I greatly, greatly appreciate that. And with that, find that 10 minutes this week. Get that quiet time. Come up with that innovation, and I look so forward to seeing what it is you're working on. With that, we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Podcasting nonstop since 2005, this has been the Killer Innovation Show on the Innovators Network. This show is distributed by the Innovators Network. For more information and other great shows and content, visit theinnovators.network.